Okay, good. So uh, let me just, yeah. So my talk is on the Jai programming language and what can we learn from it uh, as C++ developers. First, a little bit about me. My name is Lucas Sass. I'm a student at the University of Leeds. I'm an entrepreneur working on an app called Medicus. I'm also a contractor. I now will work on the DLVM compiler. I'm also a game developer, and my current toy project is a const expert NES emulator. <laughs> if you're any into any of that stuff, come talk to me. So from some, for some history and context, Jack has been in development since 2014. It is not publicly available yet, it's in a private beta, and it's made by Jonathan Blow. And Jonathan Blow is a game developer famous for making the indie games Braid and The Witness. And in 2014, he had a talk on ideas for programming languages for video game. He was a bit disgruntled with C++, and so he decided to make his own programming language. So Jai is a data-oriented C-like systems programming language targeted specifically at game development developers, and it compiles to both C and LVM IR. And it is not meant to replace C++ for everyone. J Jonathan Blow was specific that he wants an 80% solution, specifically for game developers who code in a style that is very similar to him, and for game developers that are dealing with these particular issues. So what are the problems that game developers more often deal with? So first off, it's integration with tooling. So this is what reflection would be great for. We need like our animations and everything to work with our data structures in games, memory layout and cache efficiency. Um, rapid development, good support for the target platform, PC and console, especially on consoles, newer C++ versions are not always present, uh, low level capabilities and high performance, architectural patterns for tightly coupled systems, that's why you hear a lot of game developers talk shit about OP. <laughs> So what's so special about Jai? And one of the main features that was actually presented in one of the first demos of Jai was uh, the fact that you can run everything at compile time. The, uh, the, your source files basically get compiled into an intermediate bytecode, and the compiler knows how to run it. And actually, one of his first demos was showcasing an Invaders game running, made in OpenGL, running from within the compiler. And basically, if you don't kill enough invaders, you don't get to compile your code. And I wanted to run this for you all. So this is quite a silly example of what the language can do, but it shows that if this demo is from 2014, it was already pretty powerful in its mechanism of doing anything at compile time. And a good example of what you can do at compile time is its build system. So basically the build system is an API, you write a function that you run at compile time, and you have an API through which you can tell the compiler, hey, these are my compiler settings, this is our, these are my files, I want you to then compile them. And this is very great because you have a standard build system, you don't need to learn a separate uh, programming language like CMake or Make, which are terrible. And you also don't need a separate tool. So like in Rust, you would need the Cargo, and in uh, D, you would need something like Dub. But here, it is very great. And during that uh, compilation phase, you can also have a conversation with the compiler and ask it for different details. So another use case that I found for compile time execution was I was talking to Andrew Alexandrescu about D, and he mentioned compile time regexes in D. And that's a great feature of D, but they are very, very slow. Uh, so caching here would seem like a simple optimization that would help them quite a lot. However, indeed, this requires a compiler plugin, which is hard to write and very time consuming. In Jai, however, what you can do is that you can go at compile time, hey compiler, give me all the functions that build, that are called that build regexes, and if the arguments passed to them are, can be validated at compile time, then I'm just gonna check if the regex is already cached, if it, uh, if it is not, I'm going to generate it and then cache it, and if it's not, uh, and if it is present, I already have it in the cache, I'm gonna read it from the file and insert it. And this would be very simple to do in Jai, and you could do it as an API that then is very easy to serve to your customers, whereas in D, it would be hard pressed to sell people on a compiler plugin for this very specific feature. 
Another, uh, some of the other features that I would like to talk about are the data-oriented features. So to explain here about a very important concept is array of structs versus structs of arrays. So if we have something like a vector struct, like an X and a Y, um, we would have array of structs would be like X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, if we had an array of them. But if we go structs of arrays, then we have all the Xs and all the Ys afterwards. And this is particularly great from SIMD, which game developers tend to use often. However, in C++, it's quite difficult to do if you want a nice interface for that. Uh, however, in Jai, you have a keyword for that. So I can, this is Jai syntax, I can do a vector struct with an X and a Y, and then if I declare an array of three elements of SOA vectors, and I just print it as floats, I will get like one, 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 two, two, two. And then I can also get a I can actually get a pointer into that array, and SOA pointers are a bit special, they're fat pointers, 128 bits, but they basically hold all the information necessary for you to use it as if it were a regular pointer. So you can say position.x and position.y, and in the back it does the pointer math in order to get me the elements. <laughs> Uh, another feature from Jai, this one is a missing feature. So in C++, you would do something like this. You would have like an entity structure with your things that every entity has, and then you would do like, I don't know, a door is a special entity and it publicly inherits from entity and then has some extra data. In Jai, you cannot do this with inheritance. However, I think it has a much more powerful mechanism, especially for what game developers tend to do often, which is namespace manipulation. So in Jai, you would have your entity structure and your door structure and you would do sort of like in C where you put the entity as the first element in door but notice the use of the using keyword the using keyword here basically says hey take all the names from the entity struct and pull them into the namespace of door so then if I have a door I can just say my door that position and it gets translated into my door that entity that position and this is way more powerful than inheritance because in inheritance I will just end up having the value of the struct that I inherit from as like the first element in my struct. But in Jai, I can use using on something like an SOA pointer. So then my entity could actually be part of a larger pool, like an uh, a SOA array of 100 entities. But I can still use the nice syntax as if I'm inheriting from it. And this is particularly very powerful for people who are very concerned about memory layouts. And also, it's very easy to refactor. So if I'm a game developer, I could just go, hmm, let me put SOA here and see what happens, what's the performance. So this is particularly very useful for game developers. Um, another one is custom allocators. So Jai out of the box has support for multiple allocators. It has a global struct called the context which store information about the allocator and can change it dynamically at runtime. And for example, for string manipulation, if you want to do something mid-frame, you might want to switch in game development to a stack base, that, a temporary allocator that gets freed at the end of your frame or something like that. Um, also, uh, Jonathan Blow mentioned in his original talk about the language that syntactical consistency and simplicity for him was very important. So in his language, you can see how he sort of builds this syntax. So you go from like a scope to a scope with a closure to a lambda and to a function. And he argues that this is very, very easy to refactor them because the difference from between a lambda and a function is literally one character. Also, I believe that this syntax allows for a very different kind of uh, coding style that you will often find in game development. Um, so here, for example, um, what you can have in his language are scopes but with closure guards. So basically, in this demo, I'm not, I have A and B in the upper scope, but in this lower scope, I am not allowing, uh, I'm only allowing B, so A using A there wouldn't work. Right, and then C that I declare in that scope will not work outside the scope. And then I can also give a name with this scope. And this would basically allow you, instead of writing a bunch of tiny functions and then just calling them once in a larger function, you can just write everything in line while keeping the benefits of separating your um, code into multiple function by giving names or uh, passing your parameters explicitly. And even exper very experienced programmers like John Carmack, who worked on the original Doom and at ID and SpaceX, uh, commented on this. He said, um, working on the Armadillo spaceship, I took the main tick function and started inlining all the subroutines. Well, I can say that I found a hidden bug that I could uh, that could have caused a crash, literally. I did find some several variables that were said multiple times, a couple control flow things that looked a bit dodgy, and the final code got smaller and cleaner. After living with the code in that style for quite some time, I, have found any, I haven't found any drawbacks to it, and I have started applying the general approach 
at, to my code at id. So to be clear, what he says is that in the past, he would do code sort of like this, where those minor functions are only ever used in major function, and then he switched to a code that looked more like this, right? But this has the general issues that advocates for this style would tell you, whereas, oh, well, variables declared in minor function one would end up in minor function two and so on. And not everyone is John Carmack, so, you know, but in Jai, we can have a style like this where you have all the benefits that people who argue for smaller functions would uh, tell you, but keep the linearity of having just one pathway through the code. And I think this uh, aids a lot in game development where a lot of people would code like this. Um, also, uh, Jai has a very different approach to a standard library. So for them, the standard library, it's very important that offers SDL-like functionality for rapid prototyping. So like window, audio, graphics, networking. Standard library is also meant to be optional and not enforced in their opinion. And for certain containers uh, from C++, such as to vectors to string, in Jai, they are implemented at the language level. So string and uh, dynamic arrays are implemented directly at the language level. And this shows a very different mentality, where C++ wants to be open for everyone. Jen is very opinionated, and it's focused on a very specific target audience. So how does C++ compare to Jai? Well, in 2014, when Jonathan Blow started working on it, most people used C++ 11. Const expert was very limited. Template metaprogramming was a bit of a mess. Reflection was non-existent. Uh, SDL-like features were not part of a standard library. Build system fragmentations and allocators are a pain. And this is a quote from the EA standard template library implementation, which says, among game developers, the most fundamental weakness in the stood allocator design, uh, uh, the, it's, uh, the weakness is the stood allocator design, and it is the weakness that was the largest contributing factor to the creating of EASDL, which is a whole implementation of the standard library for game developers by EA. But C++ is evolving, <laughs> and um, since 2014, we've had SG14 for game development and low latencies, thanks to Guy Davidson and a bunch of other people. Template metaprogramming has gotten way better. Context per restrictions have been uh, lifted and are starting to get removed. I talked to Herb Sutter at this conference, and he told me, proudly proclaim context for all the things. And the standard library actually keeps evolving and adding SDL-like features such as audio, network, file system, linear algebra, graphics, stuff that game developers would actually love to see. We also have concepts and modules coming soon, polymorphic allocators, um, meta classes and reflection, which might actually be able to implement the SOA feature uh, that we saw in Jai. And there are also proposals to improve exception and other parts of the language. So I believe that as C++ developers, it is very important to look at other languages, such as Rust, Jai, D, Odin, Zig, maybe even Go. Uh, they, are, they have a lot of interesting ideas that are bringing to the table, and particularly before they usually try to go after very targeted audiences. The beauty of C++, though, in my opinion, is how it tries to work for all kinds of very diverse developers. C++ allows for zero-cost abstractions and nice interfacing domain often associated with impenetrable C code bases. So C++ is moving in a very similar direction to other languages in certain instances, safety, compile time execution, memory allocation, error handling. And C++ is also very welcoming and open to all kinds of developers. And I believe that when C++ features are successful and we all agree on them, uh, it ends up in visible results. So here is a thing that I saw on Twitter recently, where it's basically the um, total reported open source vulnerabilities per language. And C++ is quite low. I think that if we ask any of you what you thought the percentage was, you would think much higher. And especially when you look at C, but look, like Java or JavaScript, all these high-level languages with massive promises uh, have way more vulnerabilities than C++. And if you look at C++ over time, the percentage is even lower. And this, I think, is in no small part because of features like RAII or zero-cost abstractions that help out write very high-performance code that at the same time works correctly. So in conclusion, Jai is a very fascinating programming language, and uh, it's worth looking into, especially if you're a game developer. C++ is evolving and getting better and better for all developers. Jai currently is in development at Tecla, Jonathan Blow's company. You can follow the development on Jonathan Blow's YouTube and Twitch channel, or follow him on Twitter. And also Abner Coimbre, he does Jai Wednesdays on Twitch every single Wednesday. So yeah, thank you very much.